Zach, what are y'all doing, man? Y'all, we we came and visited you guys last year at Celebration and SDCC. Y'all had some really cool and awesome new statues, busts, jumbos, and more. And then we show up again this year, and then you just had to put more heat on us? What's the deal? I'm sorry, man. It's the way it had to be. I, I suppose so. So you guys just had your panel today. Yes. So this is Thursday, day one, or technically day two, or... One and a half. One and a half, <laughs> however we want to call it, of San Diego Comic-Con. And Gentle Giant had their panel with the Diamond Select panel. Yes. And Nick got us all kinds of awesome coverage. You'll see Nick here in a moment, and you see Nick doing our awesome jumbo reviews on rebelscum.com for Gentle Giant here, because he is a mad dog collector for the jumbos. I mean, you should really see his jumbo collection. That thing is impressive. It would blow your mind. <laughs> and we're going to let him talk about those. What I want to talk about is the mini bus. So we have some new mini busts here. I, I yes. mean, I see some other familiar statues that I've recently be either been made available or have recently been put up for pre-order. Yes. But what's this new stuff? I see something I'm really excited about right there in the corner. Yes, the uh, the TIE Fighter Pilot Concept 1-6 scale version bus. Uh, that one is going to be our, I believe we're going to be offering that later on this year. We try to offer a concept bus every year, uh, and I believe this year it'll be the TIE Fighter Pilot. Uh, it wasn't here for the show. Um, it, usually, we've done in the past, we've done a concept bus for the San Diego. But uh, we will be offering it, I think, before the end of the year. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and also new up here, you can see our next uh, Halloween uh, monster exclusive uh, for the web, uh, which is Nebron Leads. And uh, this one came out really great. Uh, if you, you can, I don't know if you can see, but behind his back, he's got a blaster. It's pretty cool. Oh, that's really cool. And uh, the rest of these we've seen, we haven't offered the Luke Skywalker with Yoda yet, but uh, I think we're going to offer that one pretty soon. I'm not sure uh, what, what uh, avenue we're going to offer it through, but um, uh, the rest of these are uh, in various states of uh, pre-order or release. Uh, Chrysanthemum, uh, Grand Inquisitor just hit uh, yesterday, uh, and um, the uh, Offworld Jawa, that's the holiday exclusive that's available for Premier Go. I got to say, I absolutely love how big Chrysanthemum looks next to the other mini busts. Because on yes. his own, you probably wouldn't be able to tell he's a mini bust until you've set him next to other characters of average size. Yes. And now you can really tell. And I yeah. love that you have his knuckle dusters just <laughs> primed and ready to go. That looks so, so sweet. Now, if you look down here on the second level, there are more awesome mini busts. Now, these are also, I believe, an various uh, stages of pre-order or release, correct? Yes. Uh, I think the most recent pre-order offering was probably the uh, uh, Jedi Fallen Order Purge Trooper Commander. Um, but um, uh, the most recent reveal, uh, which we just revealed here at the show, is Red Leader. Um, and we do also have a Gold Leader in the works. I don't know when we're going to be offering Red Leader. Uh, I believe it will be a regular release uh, in the next couple of months. Okay. Um, but. Um, uh, keep an eye out for on the social media and uh, the blog for that information. Awesome. And tell me about some of these statues. I see somebody new who's a big Clone Wars fan favorite. Yes. Amongst some other iconic characters. Yes, Plo Koon. Uh, I think this one came out really great. Uh, someone pointed out that it is likely more based on the Clone Wars than on Attack of the Clones uh, because of the uh, armor on his arms. Um, but uh, it's a really great piece. It's a great companion to Kit Fisto. Uh, which is uh, up for pre-order now and should be coming out, I think, in the next couple of months. Um, and, uh, of course, we got the Din Djarin on bike and we got the, the armor. And um, I think Bausch Leia is actually out now. I'm not sure how she made it here to the show. Usually, we, If it's already out, we don't usually bring it and put it in the display case. But, um, but that's a great piece, so I'm happy to show it as, as many times as we can. And, um, yeah, we got some more premieres over here. Uh, Grand Inquisitor also hit yesterday. Both Grand Inquisitor, the bust and the statue, 1-7 statue, both hit yesterday. Uh, for pre-order or for For order. comic shops. Oh, for comic yeah, shops. Yeah, okay, they, so they actually hit out. stores. Yeah, yeah, the Grand Inquisitor, bust and statue, both out. Awesome. Chewbacca, we're showing for the very first time the companion piece to the Han Solo. And uh, for the very first time, we're showing off Cad Bane from Book of Boba Fett. 
the training ball. That's cool. That is cool. Oh, there she is. There's a right there. All right, now tell me about some of these milestones down here. The milestones sure. are some of my favorite of the statues. And it's hard to choose because both Premier Guild and Milestones look fantastic. But there are definitely some collectors who are sticklers about sticking with one sixth scale, and that's where Milestones lives. And the detail on them. Wow. I this Vader captures very well that that chilling, somber moment from the end of Clone Wars when he finds the remains of Ahsoka, quote unquote, because obviously he didn't actually, right? But yeah. Really cool. No, it's a great piece. It's sort of the follow-up to our um, Darth Maul and Ahsoka milestones that we did. Um, I believe he'll be the same price, about two hundred and fifty dollars. Um, but no, this whole shelf, I'm a big fan of um, the Luke. I think the Luke likeness on the milestone in the armor is really great. Uh, the Lando likeness is fantastic, um, and I'm a big fan of the character. Akbar is one of my favorite characters of all time, so he's. Uh, I'm very excited we're making a milestone of him. And um, the one that is on the end there, we're showing off for the first time. He's going to be offered um, for pre-order tonight at nine o'clock West Coast time, midnight East Coast time. And this is the uh, lightsaber training Luke, and he comes with interchangeable helmeted and unhelmeted heads, as well as. Um, the lightsaber with the uh, deflection, as well as a regular lightsaber. So you can have just Luke with no helmet and just a plain lightsaber, you know, just wielding a lightsaber, or you can have it in the training. That is really fantastic. And real quick, before I pass this over to Nick to talk to you about some jumbos and some Legends of Three Dimensions, which are also incredible, what is your favorite piece that you announced this weekend at San Diego Comic-Con? Gosh, um, it's probably Nabron Leeds. Uh, I just am a big fan of the, of, um, the Cantina creatures. And um, I, 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 I'm a Star Wars fan, but I'm not like a, like a diehard super fan. But I know all of the, character, all the characters' names just because I worked at a toy magazine for years. And I was covering all these action figures that came out. And so when I, when I saw them in the case, I'm like, I had to write up the card for it because we didn't have a card. He was so new. And I'm like, well, that's Nabron Lee, right? And I had to double check online, but I, I, I knew his name for whatever reason. This is a character never named in the movies. But because I covered action figures for so long, I was like, oh, I know who that is exactly. Um, but uh, I think it's great with the forearms and the blaster behind the, the pink milk. And just uh, it's a really great piece. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of the Napper Leaves. I think it looks good. And, and I love that you guys have a focus on the Cantina characters. And I hope sometime really soon we'll finally be able to put together the full roster of a Moss Eisley Cantina. And I feel like we're getting <laughs> kind of close. I mean, oh, they, closer than some other companies. Yeah. Well, I, with all the additions from the special editions, they're probably about... 30 or 40 aliens in that canteen. I'm not sure how many they've made uh, before we took over, but uh, if these keep doing well, we'll keep doing one every year. Uh, you know, we've been doing the monsters for Halloween. So we did uh, Lax Sivrak, uh, we did um, uh, the Duros alien, um, and we did um, uh, the, the Deveronian. Uh, so we've got uh, we've got a good history of doing the, doing the creatures, and he's the next one. Awesome. Well, Zach, thank you so much for your time with me over here. But now I'm going to pass you over to Nick. All right. Like I said, Nick absolutely loves jumbos. Couldn't wait to talk about them. So here is Nick. All right. Well, since I like making our cameraman bend, we're going to talk about the Legends in 3D first. So you showed off a couple in the DST panel. Uh, I believe the newest one besides Salacious Crumb was, is this the first time we're seeing Darth Vader at a convention? Uh, I, I, at the first time at a convention, yes. Most of the stuff in these cases has not been seen at conventions. Um, the, uh, the Darth Vader uh, we're showing off for the first time. It's a really great piece. It's got an amazing response online when we showed it off last month. Um, it's up for pre-order now. Um, Salacious Crumb we're showing for the very first time. Um, and uh, the Emperor Palpatine, I believe we just showed at Celebration uh, in London. Um, and he has not gone up for pre-order yet. Neither has the Gamorrean Guard. But um, I think those are both, both going to be going up in the next few months. So with that Vader, there's a, a lot of depth and layering to this character. You can see the, the face underneath, a layer of cracked helmet underneath another, the cracked dome. How many different pieces is that? Uh, I know that the, um, the helmet itself, is uh, the dome, is um, two pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, you've got the mask, uh, which is another layer. 
Um, I'm pretty sure that it goes, that's about it, the head, the mask, and the, uh, and the dome. But um, it's, uh, it's got a lot of great detail. The cape hanging down the back, you can't see it from here, but it's got a big tear in it. Um, it's just a really great detailed piece. And uh, you know, it's just such a, such a striking image from the show. And uh, to be able to capture it, I think they did a great job. Yeah, definitely. Now, I know you guys have done electronics on some things. Is that something we might ever see in the Legends of 3D line? Like we might get a, uh, like a light up chess box or something on a Darth Vader or another character, just some eye lights or something in the future, or maybe a uh, Death Trooper or something like that? That would be very cool. The, um, we did the light up um, hologram mm -hmm. uh, Din Djarin, uh, I think. Uh, we did that as a San Diego exclusive. I think that was probably um, the last San Diego before COVID uh, hit. Um, I think that was the, the exclusive for that year. But um, uh, that one was very cool. I'd love to do more non-hologram electronics. Um, we had just released the, um, the Milestones uh, Grogu on Seeing Stone, which has the light up, light up uh, lettering on the base. Mm -hmm. So um, it's certainly certainly possible to do more. In fact, the, uh, the, the bust of um, the off-world Jawa has light up eyes. Yes. Uh, so um, yeah, no, we try to do lighting wherever it makes sense. Um, you know, the Darth Vader's the chest, uh, the chest stops on the, um, a little up, right above the, the light up box on this one. So no opportunity there, but, um, uh, I'll, I'm going to push for more lighting whenever we can, but they, uh, they seem to be able to pick and choose their spots. Great. So onto the jumbos. Sure. So we just got 88 was announced July 1st with yes. the rollout of the premier guild. So this is our first time seeing him in the, uh, the flesh essentially in the, the robotic flesh. Um, so pretty cool to be able to get this guy from uh, Jabba's dungeon there into the line. And then of course yesterday, or today, we just saw the announcement for Lando, who's going up for order just now. Yep. Uh, featuring his, uh, or have his force bike uh, with him. In he the, will have the Vibro Axe. The Vibro Axe. Vibro Axe, yes. yes. And uh, that one will um, go up for pre-order tonight, 9 o'clock West Coast time, uh, midnight East Coast time. Perfect. And then this is the first time we're seeing the amazing Max Rebo band in color. We saw the prototype at uh, Celebration London. So now we see the painted mic stands, we see the painted flute, we see the uh, uh, everything here, Max, with this giant keyboard set. Do the keys press in at all? Uh, I don't think the keys move, uh, but he, he does come out of the, the piano, I'm pretty sure. Perfect. And you talked about in the panel two different packaging options. Uh, can you give us a rough sense of what those two different options are? I think are? We, it is going to be offered um, both individually packaged and also as a larger box set. I'm not sure how, who will, will receive which one of those. I think one of them is going to be a Premier Guild exclusive. Okay. Um, so um, I think we're still working those details out. Uh, I'm pretty sure the box set is going to be the Premier Guild exclusive. but um, So that would be uh, the traditional Kenner giant uh, package? Yeah, a larger cardboard box as opposed to um, individual. I don't know if we're going to do individual like blister cards mm -hmm. like we do with the standard jumbos. You know, Droopy and Psy might fit into regular cards, but I don't know how they're going to package uh, uh, Max Rebo. <laughs> it's it's going to be kind of unique, <laughs> but it's definitely uh, great that we're getting this band uh, together. You don't see this produced a lot. Uh, it hasn't received a lot of love in any toy line the, right. the Max Rebo ran. Well, so um, people are always asking for more of the original 96. Yes. Um, so uh, it's uh, it's it's um, kind of noteworthy that everybody on the shelf is one of the original 96. And it's uh, also all Return of the Jedi, which yes. is amazing yes. too. In our a 40th good, a good year. year. Yeah, good year yeah. to launch more Return of the Jedi stuff. Yes. Um, is the possibility out there, if we're doing a large packaging for Max Rebo Band, what about a Jabba? Uh, I think that's a common ask. Um, I don't know um, what their plans are. I'm sure if this one does well, uh, they'll start getting more and more ambitious in their jumbo releases. Because yeah. this is uh, this is ambitious. Um, so if it does well, uh, I'm, I, I, Java, I'm sure, is not out of the question. I would say also ambitious is the Indiana Jones map room, which is quite a large set. Yes, yes. Um, that one, unfortunately, did not make it to the show, which is very unfortunate. But um, it is still available for pre-order on the website. I think they do still have a few left. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and yeah, uh, it's, it's going to be a really cool set when it comes out. And then we're going to have the individually carded. That's yes. going to be in a box as well. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have the individually carded Indiana Jones later on. But it's a good example of doing a large set yes. on the Jumbo line. Yes. So maybe it sets some precedent yeah. for Jabba's throne. It's a, it's a, it's uh, a lot of tooling, a lot of like tooling. Maybe, yes. maybe, maybe the throne might be a, a bridge too far, but uh, I'd love to see a Jabba in the line. Definitely. Are we anticipating any more reveals this year for the oh, line? Yeah, well, yeah, um, I'm sure we're going to see uh, a bunch more. I'm trying to think who else is on the... I don't have it off the top of my head who's going to be coming, but we solicit three or four new Star Wars items every month, so I think you're going to see Jumbos pretty soon. Okay, well, Zach, thank you for your time. Appreciate thank it, you. as thank always. Thank you for coming by. Some great stuff, and uh, thanks for having us. 
and Rebel Scum, keep checking back. Like, subscribe, and follow. We're gonna have plenty more content here at the con. And if you're at uh, San Diego Comic-Con, stop by, say hi to Zach, he's a friendly guy. Pick up the latest exclusives and stay tuned for more coming right at you.